Hello and welcome to the Type 2 Diabetes Recovery Program. I'm Mark, the Diabetes Diet Guy. I'm an advanced specialist diabetes dietitian and I'm going to be taking you through the program. Our first video is about understanding type 2 diabetes and getting to grips with exactly what's going on inside your body. So we're going to jump into the video, so let's go. <laughs> So the first question we need to answer is, what is diabetes? Well, with any form of diabetes, it basically means that your body has too much glucose in the blood. Glucose isn't designed to stay in the blood long term. It's transported around your body in the blood, but it's designed to go somewhere so it can be used as energy. So glucose is energy, and it goes into the cells of the body where it can be stored or used for energy to help power the things that your body does day to day, whether that's exercise, or even just the things you're not even aware of, like your heart beating, breathing, kidneys functioning. This all requires energy and glucose is a vital part of that. When it comes to diabetes, regardless of the type, what happens is the glucose is unable to exit the blood and it stays there. So it's not designed to be there long term. It wants to go to where it's supposed to be. But for, for some reason, depending on the type of diabetes, it's unable to exit the blood and get to where it wants to go. And this is exactly the sort of thing that we're going to be talking about in the first section of this video, which is the top drawings here. Now this has to do with the pancreas, hormones, and ultimately what's driving the diabetes in the first instance. But there is a second part of the tale, which is to do with the liver. So that's going to be the second part of this video. So let's start with the pancreas. So what happens with type 2 diabetes is your body starts to develop something called insulin resistance. You might have heard that term. Now let me just explain what's going on in the body, in your bodies, and then we'll start to loop back to that term. So the pancreas is an organ, and it has two functions. One, it helps you to digest food, which is one of its primary functions, and another small part, a very small part of its function is dedicated to releasing hormones, one of which is called insulin. Now insulin is the hormone in your body that lowers blood glucose levels. Whenever you hear the term hormone, essentially you should just hear the term messenger. Hormones are messengers, they go around the body and they tell your body to do things. And insulin's message is to tell your body to lower blood glucose levels. So the pancreas releases insulin and insulin tells the cells of the body to open up and let the glucose in from the blood so it can be used or stored as energy. So a nice way to think about this is insulin, the hormone, works a little bit like a key and where it's trying to get to is inside the cells which are locked. So insulin works like a key, it opens up the locks, the lock opens, and then the blood glucose is able to go from the blood into the cells where it can be used for energy and that allows your body to do all the functions that it needs to do day to day. So what starts happening in type 2 diabetes to loop back to this term insulin resistance is the cells start to get clogged up by fat. So one of the key drivers for type 2 diabetes, one of the, re the main reasons why it happens to people, is people are carrying too much fat or they're obese. 80 to 90% of people with type 2 diabetes are diagnosed because they are carrying too much weight. There's a small percentage of people that have it because of genetic, genetic reasons or old age where things are just starting to wear out. But the overwhelming majority is to do with too much fat, um, which is clogging up these cells. So as a result, the keys aren't fitting the locks. So some keys are still fitting the locks, but not as many. So essentially, your pancreas is releasing the insulin. The insulin is getting to the cells, but the keys aren't fitting the locks. So some locks open, some locks don't. As a result, you end up with more glucose sitting in the blood because it can't get into the cells where it wants to be used for energy. So your insulin is essentially working less efficiently. You're producing the same amount of insulin and in fact over a period of time as your body starts to recognize this is happening glucose levels start to rise your pancreas will release even more insulin to accommodate this so you'll get more keys floating around but unfortunately it doesn't necessarily mean lower blood glucose levels because they're still not opening the locks so you end up with this situation where you have a lot of insulin in your body it's not working very efficiently, it's not opening all the locks, glucose is sitting in the blood. This feedback loop tells the pancreas to produce even more insulin. Now over a period of time, because of this insulin resistance, 
what can start to happen is your pancreas can start to overwork itself. It's releasing too much insulin, it's getting tired. And you do find that people's um, insulin producing capability over a period of years with type 2 diabetes, particularly if it's not very well controlled, i.e. their blood glucose levels are running high for a long time, you can actually start to wear out this pancreas. And we do see in certain individuals um, where they were initially diagnosed as type 2 diabetes, they haven't managed it overly well over the years. And as a result, glucose levels start to rise, they develop this big insulin resistance, and the pancreas has actually worn itself out to the point where they are no longer producing or hardly any of their own insulin. Now, throughout this process, people will end up on varying degrees of different medications. For example, metformin increases the sensitivity of these keys to the lock. So you get more locks fitting the keys and that allows your body to um, lower its blood glucose levels. Other medications like sulfonylureas, they produce more keys from your pancreas, they tell your pancreas to release more insulin, which means you just have more floating around, but it doesn't really address the underlying problem. So this is the first thing and probably the most common element of type 2 diabetes that people understand. Now, obviously, with this fat clogging up the cells, this is the one that we can really take advantage of because if we start to lose weight and get fit and healthy, we can start to break up the fat, more locks fit the keys, and you can start to turn back the clock. So diabetes is very much on a scale. We used to think it just got a lot worse over time and it was a progressive disease. It still is a progressive disease, but it exists on this spectrum and you can move up and down that spectrum depending on how you're living your life. And that's why this program really focuses on exercise and lifestyle and diet, because these are the interventions that can start to address this, which makes these work better, which spares this, the pancreas. So we can really improve glucose levels and one of our videos will be on type 2 diabetes remission where you can actually put your diabetes into remission depending on the stage at which you've been diagnosed and how many medications you might be on. But regardless, the message is it's never too late. You can always improve your type 2 diabetes with lifestyle change. So this is the first element. The second element is focusing on this liver. Now, I mentioned about this fat clogging up cells. That doesn't just happen around the body, it happens in the organs of the, including the liver. Now the liver's job, amongst many other things, but one of its jobs is to regulate how much glucose your body releases into the bloodstream. So the liver delivers glucose into the blood and it will increase the amount that is in the blood when you are fasting, like overnight um, or between meals, and it will reduce the amount that it is releasing after eating. So because you'll have that extra, um, glucose hit from the food that you've eaten. So it's quite a nice, neat little system. And the way it does that is these insulin keys will land on the liver. Nice way to visualize it. And what happens is when insulin lands on the liver, it tends to turn off its glucose releasing um, system. So then you'll end up with less glucose in the blood because we have eaten and we actually need to go from a place of releasing it to storing it. So in that instance, when insulin levels are high, glucose actually goes back into the liver to be stored as something called glycogen. So glucose is free, uh, free sugar that's floating around in the blood. Glycogen is the stored form in the liver, in the kidneys, and in the muscle cells. This is what insulin does. But this, level of, this layer of fat doesn't just limit itself to the cells of the body, it's also in the organs. So with type 2 diabetes, what happens is you have developed a layer of fat around the liver. Most people with type 2 diabetes or a vast majority will have silent or diagnosed fatty liver. Now what happens is we're not getting as many keys fitting the locks on the liver, which means we can't turn off this glucose producing ability. So actually your liver starts to release more glucose into the system. So now this is very significant because what this does is it raises your baseline glucose level. So actually type two diabetes is a condition where your baseline glucose level is too high and anything you add on top of that exacerbates the condition. Most people think about it the other way around. They'll look at the food and what the glucose rises after eating, but actually it's the baseline level that we're working from. And that's the one we want to address in the first instance.
And again, certain medications will work on this. Metformin reduces the amount of glucose that your liver is releasing. So your baseline glucose level is much lower. So it basically leaves us with this double pronged effect. Our baseline glucose level is too high. We haven't got enough keys fit in the locks around the body. And when you eat, as a result, your body's unable to store the glucose or use it for energy. And therefore it remains in, in the um, blood and as a result, you end up with hyperglycemia, high glucose levels, higher foundation, and also too much more when you've eaten food. So once again, with the treatment or the best form of treatment with lifestyle, exercise, and diet, is trying to turn back this clock and start to mobilize these fat stores around the liver, which then allows the keys to work better, which then lowers the baseline glucose level. And it also does the same things on the pancreas and at the other cells of the body. So this is why we're really keen to get people focusing on their health and looking after themselves in a much more holistic and better way, because without a doubt, this is the best treatment for type two diabetes. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. As I say, probably the two main components of type two diabetes, I don't want the video to go on too long, so we'll leave it there. In the next video, we're gonna start looking at how we measure glucose targets, something called the HbA1c, and we're going to start to gradually develop out the different elements of diabetes, getting you to understand what it is, which we've just done, understand how we measure it, which will be the next video. And then or when I say measure it, I mean measure your control and how well your glucose levels are maintained. And then we're going to start looking a lot more at the diet side of things, exercise and some other helpful information that by the end of this course, you're going to have everything you need to really put this into practice. So I hope that is useful and we'll see you in lesson two. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found that video useful. Obviously we have the course and this is very early days in it, but if you're finding throughout the course or any of the videos that we have on the channel that you're struggling, you find that you need an extra helping hand, we do offer consultancy services. Head over to diabetesdietguide.com where we have our consultancy page. Get in touch and we'll see how we can help you. Thanks a lot. See you later.